Alright. You may have a seat. Hey, super over there. glad just to get to, to worship with you guys. This is honestly Wednesdays is one of my favorites. Just Wednesday nights are my favorite nights of the week, man. I love it so much with you guys. Just get to hang out and open up God's word together. So, uh, like I said, we are starting in a new series called Church Crew and just really excited about this. Super pumped to, uh, I think. Because here's the heart behind this, okay? Just real quick so we can go into this and go ahead and open up God's word together. But, I mean, guys, we are, and, and the hope and the desire behind this was uh, for the series before this together, right? Uh, and just now we're talking about church and community and worship together. It is all together. And I hope that you begin to see that because we cannot do this, this, this Christian thing alone. We need one another, and so that's why it is so valuable, so important for us to talk about this and to not just hear it intellectually, but know it within our heart and to live it out. Because if we don't, then you're going to be isolated, you're going to be you feel like you're on an island, or you feel like you're just going to be stuck in your relationship with Christ because you're not truly fulfilling a call or a purpose in your life because you're not really engaging with Community, because God has a, a desire to build up His church, right? Just a church here, a church down the street, a church in Zimbabwe, right? He has a desire to build up His His church, and He has done so with the great, with a great purpose in mind. Because our God is all about relationships. He is a God of relationships. Christ-centered community is what God has set up from the very beginning. Of time, and it shouldn't be any surprise that his desire for us today is, is, is still community. It's a very core desire of God for us to be uh, just in community as the church. And so uh, we also want to note that it's more than just when we think of church, right? It's more than just a building, okay? And honestly, I feel like we just need to remove that when we hear church. I almost want us to think, man, less of a brick and mortar and more of flesh and bone and soul, right? When we think of church, that's what we need to think of people. Because we need community. We need one another. We need people in our lives. However, um, today's culture, and it has been kind of sweeping this way for a very long time, but I feel like this generation specifically, the culture that we find ourselves in now, more than ever, is a culture of individualism, of isolation, and it pushes towards a mindset in a life uh, of just being, believing that there is no real need for you to give permission to someone to come into your life in a big way. There, there's, there's no need to give permission for anyone to step into your life to offer any kind of guidance or accountability or encouragement or help. It's the idea that I've got this all handled and I don't really need anyone's help especially if it is going to really speak to me in a manner that speaks this word and is counter and is counter to what I feel is right. Because what I feel is right is right. What you feel is right, that's right for you. But that's not where we need to be as Christians. As Christians and as a part of the church that God has established, we must go against the flow of culture and re-implement. And what I mean by that is like re-establish, begin anew the idea of community, togetherness, and unity. So maybe in your life tonight, you have been very much individualistic. Isolation is your game. Like, I just need to be me, myself, and I. Or maybe even just a certain clique. Because oftentimes, we can roll deep in just a few people, and that's our people, and that's good. And if anyone else tries to get into that, then you can just step off, right? Like, that's not where we're, what we're all about. But we want to go uh, into a, an idea, a concept, a doctrine, really, of community that is deep, rich, and beautiful. And that's the idea. All right, so we want to go, begin to think to go against the flow. I have a question for you real quick, though, before we dive into this. Does, uh, dive. Does anyone have a pool? No pun intended, right? You have a pool? Okay, sweet, awesome. I, uh, we'll talk later because I want to come hang out because I don't have a pool. I, 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 I don't have a pool, and growing up, I didn't have a pool. But you know what the, the next best thing to not having a pool is? Having a pool is? 
having friends who have pools, right? That's what you want. You just want to have friends who have pools because you don't have to take care of the pool. You don't have to clean it. They do, and you still get to reap the benefit of uh, swimming around. So I had friends who had uh, a pool, and it was an above-ground pool. And I don't know why this is. Every above-ground pool that I jump into, right, this always happens without a doubt. It's just so much fun. I don't, maybe it's because it's circular. But what do you do? I jump in. I grab onto the side, I go to the side, and hopefully I'm with uh, some other people, and we start going in the same direction around the pool. You, you, you ever done this before? And then you do it? Yeah, okay, you know, you're tracking with me now, and you go around in that direction, and eventually you get this current that's going, and then you all just kind of like stop, and you're Wee! and you're floating around, right? And it's awesome, I don't know, it's just so much fun. I always do that. Um, and, and so you just wanna go, eventually we create our, create our own current, our own flow, but it couldn't just be me, right? If I'm just in the pool, it would just, it, w- it would either be, it either wouldn't happen, or it would be a super weak, like, current that would, that would be created, right? I don't know, me, I'm pretty awesome, so I'm pretty strong, so I can do it. But, uh, if it was, say, uh, Tim, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he knew it was coming, he knew it was coming. Not Tim, he can, he can be sweet. Um, in basketball, for sure. But maybe I need Tim and Jenny and all of, like, many people in the pool, and then, so if we have a, a whole mess of people going around, dude, we can get that current going, bro, we can get that, and then you just, like, create a tight, like, a rip current or something, I don't even know, but it'd be awesome, it'd be so much fun, and so you can't do it on, on your own, you need some people around you to create that new, new flow, and so when I begin to think about this, the current and the flow that's already happy, happening in culture today, we need need one another to go against the current and even change that current. A a current, against the current of individualism and create a current of community, deep, rich, and beautiful, and is Christ-centered. So if the flow of culture now is individualism, which just maybe many of you guys would create that own own view in your life because it is is unengagement with the church, unengagement in, in that community. And so maybe the cult, like the flow of culture right now is isolation and individualism, and we want to go against it, but it's not easy. So we need one another. We need the help of others within the church, other Christians, other believers who are going in the same direction that we are. So we begin to see this current uh, of change, and we can see the wonderful value and blessing of living out our lives in community centered on Jesus. So here's the big idea. If you want to take this, uh, write this down and know this, this is the direction that we're going. Just a really simple idea, but I think very profound is that God created humans to need each other. God created humans to need each other. We need one another. Look to the person to your left and be like, I need you. Look to the person on your right. I know you're going to make eye contact. It's fine. And just look at the people around you. I mean, I, I need you. I need you, bro. I need you, sis, whatever it is. We need one another. And so this is what I want you to do. I want you to open up to Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And this is where we see in a big way that God created humans to need each other. Now, I do want to say this. First and foremost, we need God Almighty. Because when we need him first and foremost, then we establish this, as his word tells us, right? This is the very foundation of where we even get this. If we look to God and to his word, we see that God created humans to need each other. So here we find ourselves in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. But real quick, a little bit of context where we're at right now. In this passage, we are going to see the beginning of the early church. We're going to see the very, very onset of what their minds and hearts were geared towards and how it literally, guys, literally changed history. We are here because of what they have done and what we're about to read, right? And so um, previously, before this, in in chapter 2, was the Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost because Christ had ascended into heaven and uh, Peter preached a sermon. And, and he helped clarify what was going on and what that meant in the gospel. And he, you can see from verse 41 in chapter 2 that 3,000 people were saved that day and baptized. So upon hearing the gospel, many were saved and many were baptized. And right here, right there, right there in verse 41 was the birth of the church. Why we're here today. So here we go. Acts chapter 2 starting in verse 42, it says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, 
to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So here we are, the new church, the, the, the fresh church right here. And so church, the word church, uh, in, in the original Greek is ekklesia, okay? If you ever hear Pastor Aaron say that, or ecclesiology, that comes from church. It really means gathering, so it's a gathering of people. And this word is used in the New Testament more than 100 times, and it just speaks and screams of community. And community was a just a thread woven into the fabric of society, embedded in Christian uh, history, and remains embedded in how the church still functions today. So God's people were not saved to live in isolation, to live separate lives, lonely lives. They were meant to live in community. And so we're saved to be a part of the church, a part of Christ's bride. This beautiful bride, that's who the church is, to participate with other believers. God created people to need other people. Think back, Genesis 2.18. If you know that one, it says, Then the Lord said, It is not good that that man should be alone. I will make for him a helper fit for him. So God is pointing to a truth greater than you trying to find your boo thing, right? He is pointing to a truth and saying, Listen, Adam, it is not good for you to be alone. I will create for you a helper. And in that instance, it was his wife, Eve. Okay, but that truth expands even further than finding your soulmate, right, or your wife or your husband, whatever. It means, hey, you were created to live in community with other people. It is humans rely on humans, depend on and live in community with one another. So if culture around us is, is screaming isolation and, and, and individualism, God is saying to us, hey, I created you to go into a totally different direction and to be in community with other people. That's what I told you from the very beginning. So how can we do this? So from Acts uh, 2, uh, 42 through 47, we're just gonna just kind of go through some truths real quick so that we can see this and, and then say, hey, what do we do at the end of the day when, when all this is said and done? So first truth I wanna just convey to you tonight, if you wanna write this down, it's up on the screen as well. We need to live beyond ourselves. We see this in Acts 2, 44 and 45. We need to live beyond ourselves because you know what? I don't know if you know this. Sorry to break the news to you. It's not about you. All right. It is not about you. This life is not about you. This life has a greater hero in the story, and that is Jesus Christ. The early church illustrated this concept extremely well in the way that they lived. They saw others greater than themselves. They saw others, specifically other Christians in their context, as being more important than themselves. And they saw this serving other people as actually serving Christ, serving Jesus himself, because that's what he says. When you, when you serve other people, when you clothe other people, when you do this, that, and the other, it's as if you are serving Jesus himself. And so there's this genuine and authentic humbleness that they try to live out every single day. But our sin nature... Our sin nature is so selfish. You, I know that you can you can say this for a fact, right? You are a selfish human being. I am a selfish human being, but that is not what we are called to do. We are to bear one another's burdens, and to do this, we have to rely on the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. And the only way to do that is if we are redeemed, saved by Jesus Christ. So upon that confession of faith, you then have the Holy Spirit. So that is how we are able to overcome the selfish sin that just is, could run rampant in our lives, that we see already in culture, right? And we submit ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit and then therefore say, you know what? I want to be on the lookout for other people, not myself. And so we have to pray for grace to be humble, to see others as more important. We must have the heart and mindset to be continuously seeking out to serve other, other people. And so awareness, I want you to write this down. Awareness is key. 
We have got to be aware. We have got to be aware. What do we need to be aware of? We have to be aware of our own self-seeking hearts, right? We have got to know that, man, my flesh is, is sinful, and there's a war raging within, within me. There's sin and there's holiness, right, of, of God. And so the sin part is saying, man, I just want to live for self. It's all about me, I, whatever I want to do. And the holy righteous part is saying, no, you have to live up God, and, and you have to serve him. And then in doing so, you also put others as more important than Yourself, And so we have to be aware of the sinfulness that is in our, our lives. But we also need to be aware of the incredible dependence that you and I have to call upon uh, for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. To overcome constantly that sinfulness, that selfishness. And so when we are aware of our own sinfulness and our own tendency, our own flesh, and aware of the great dependence that we have to call upon by the grace of God to help us in that, our minds and our hearts are going to be constantly aware of the, of the goal and the, and the push that God has for us to serve other people. It says here in verse 45 that they were, or verse 44, they believe, that all who believed were together and had all things in common. And that doesn't mean that they're like, they all look alike and they all behave alike. No, they, they just shared things. And, but here's why. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as had any need. And so what they saw was, you know what? I just want to give. Well, I want to give to those who are in need. So we too must be aware of the needs of other people around us. So what are those needs that we need to be aware of? So the Bible says that is, is most likely a lot of people had uh, a need for, for money, to buy food, maybe to buy clothes, uh, to just keep their home going, right? Maybe the, those kind of needs. But, and so they sold items, other Christians sold items, so that they could give money to those who were in need. But for us, what might be the need for, for just people around us? And here in this room, maybe it is food, maybe it is uh, clothing. But I think a lot of times, and even the Bible points to this, it's more than just material possessions, it is giving so that we can just fulfill a need that other people hear more than material things. It's it's a need for, hey, you know what, my brother needs encouragement today. And man, my, my, my sister, and she, she needs friendship. Uh, there's a loyalty. Maybe I give loyalty because someone needs that. They, they've been They've been left alone, or they just need loyalty. They need something they can trust in. Man, I, I need to give patience today to this person. They're really, they're, they're, they're pushing my buttons, but you know what? Maybe today I just need to show some patience towards them and some, and some kind words. And maybe I just need to give some time. Maybe they need time. They just need someone to be with them. Maybe they just need a kind action. Whatever it is, maybe I just need to give up some, some judgment towards other people. Whatever it is, just so that they can feel close and feel like someone actually cares. Someone's there for them. Maybe that's what you need to give. And so just know that, like the early church, when you uh, just, you might have to give up something so that another person might receive what they need. Maybe you need to give up your pride. Maybe you need to give up time. Maybe you need to give up a certain clique or relationship because that group of people is going to not appreciate you being kind or reaching out to that other person. Maybe you need to give up your own preconceived notions of that person or some judgment that you need to let go of. Whatever it is, sometimes we just need to give up things so that we can give to those who are in need. And it's not just money. It's our emotional uh, and, and mental thought processes as well. And so when we give up to give to another, it is always going to be worth it. I guarantee you, we will not regret So when we come together here as a church, there are ways that we can be aware and serve other people. We can provide a service to meet someone's felt need, emotional need, whatever it might be, every week. Now I'm not saying you're a crutch for somebody, but someone just needs encouragement and, and kindness. You can be there for them every week. It's something we can, we can do. Like We can act that out. But we also know that there are times when we come together and there's other things that we know that only God can do. And that's truth number two right here is that prayer is powerful and we must pray for one another. That's what they did in Acts right here. They prayed for one another. They made sure that they were lifting others up so that when, when, when there was a need that they themselves could not meet, right, through, through selling their possessions or giving their time or encouragement, 
they said, you know what? If, if we can't meet this, we know someone who can. God can. He can step in if he so chooses. And so there's a whole list of action items here that we find in verse 42 that we can talk about, right? So 42, if you look at there, it says they voted devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, so God's word, and that was first and foremost, that is not, I don't think that is a, a uh, just happenstance that they said the apostles' teaching first. That was paramount, right? And then the fellowship, coming together in unity, the breaking of bread. Uh, we as good Southern Baptists, we know that if, if there's food, man, it's going to be a good time, right? So we always love to have some food, and then there is prayer. And so really, I mean, I think right here, that is something that is, is, is at the end because that is something, all of it, of course, is, has God at the very core, at the very center of it all. But this right here, when we pray, then all we have, all, all we're able to do is offer up in faith and, and say, God, I pray for my brother, my sister, and I pray that you, God, would come in and intervene in their lives. And so we're just going to zone in real quick on this aspect of prayer um, because so often, because of our individualistic mentality, I think our prayers can be so self-centered. Even when we're trying to be holy and righteous, they can be, be still so just focused on ourselves. And, and is this wrong to, to offer up prayers for yourself? No, absolutely not. God says, hey, come to me and, 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 and you know, just tell me everything, whatever it is on your heart. But he also wants us to make sure that we are praying for one another. And we're lifting one another up. As believers, prayer is our most powerful weapon. We totally, a lot of times, we, we take ourselves out of the equation. We can't do anything when we're praying. We're like, God, we need you to come in right now. We need you to, to speak. We need you to act. We, we're, we're trusting in faith, God, for you to, to do this. And it's the most powerful we weapon, and we must use it. So being in prayer for one another is not optional, but it is essential. And we want to lift one another up in their needs so that they can see the glory of God revealed. But we have to understand that just because we come to somebody, we, we ask God in, in reverence and prayer, we also ask in faith that he knows what is best. So we come and we ask in faith. We ask God for, for you to do this if you will. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we just want to see God's glory revealed. And maybe that is an answer to prayer. Maybe it's not an answer prayer, but we just want to see God's glory revealed. So we want to lift one another up in prayer. We have to be praying for one another. It is not an option. We have got to do that. So as we as we serve one another humbly, right? Because Christ, just like Christ served the church, we also serve the church. And so we, we do that and, and we offer up our time and our efforts. And so that's something that we can be a part of. We pray for one another so that we can be stronger and see God move in that way. But we also together, we can see the gospel move and spread all around us. So last truth right here is, is this, truth number three, the blood of Jesus brings us together and gives us all the same goal. Acts 2, 47, uh, 46 and 47 say this, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. We are better together for the kingdom than we are apart. One person alone can share the gospel and do an amazing, amazing thing, right? I'm not, I'm not discrediting that whatsoever. If you go and share the gospel by yourself and, and your friend and they accept Jesus, praise God, that is awesome. But, but listen, the, the fact is that we as a community, if that's our mindset, if that's our goal to see people saved and we're doing that together as a faith family, then that under the blood of Jesus Christ, we can be a force to be reckoned with for the kingdom. And we can do amazing things because of our faithfulness that we have for King Jesus and the devotion that we want to carry out his, his command to make disciples of all the nations. And so we just know that we have the same goal. I think this is what it says when and, and, and when they said they were all they had all things in common, right? Why? Because man, they were they wanted to see people saved. They wanted to see people serve. They wanted to pray for one another. They wanted to hear the teaching. They were all heading in the same direction. Guys, what direction are you heading? 
Are you heading with a Christ-centered, gospel-oriented way? Or are you following the wave of culture? That honestly is so easy to get swept up in. It is so easy. But we have to be countercultural. We are better for the kingdom than we are apart. So here's kind of like a, a little takeaway. Just if you think of anything, it's like, man, at the end of the night, I, I want to do this. This is it. We need to stop isolating ourselves. We've got to stop isolating ourselves. We can't be so uh, at arms linked with one another. We have to be locked arms with one another. And if there's any just preconceived notions that you have about another person, a brother, a sister, if there's any just, uh, just mindset that you have or bitterness, that has got to go because that cannot be a part of what we're doing if we're all going to go in the same direction, the same goal with one another. But here's the thing. In this place, as I promise you, community, in this room right now, it is, it's messy. People are messy. People are imperfect. I, I, heaven knows I'm imperfect, right? And I know you are too. But we all come together as imperfect people because God did not call us to be perfect. He called us to be faithful. He called us to, be, to, to love one another. He called us to love him. The church is not meant to be a hotel for saints. It's called to be a, a hospital for sinners. And what I mean by that is like, we cannot come here as if it's like a social club. And, and man, I'm just going to come and I'm going to, I, I want to come and I want to, I'm going to get. Like, I want to, I want to receive things. It's all about me. I'm going to come and I'm just going to, I'm just going to just receive it all. No, it's about coming to church and giving giving, giving praise to God, giving your giving your your shoulder to someone else to lean and cry on. It's about giving prayer for somebody. It is all about getting. It is not about what you can get. It's about what you can or, uh, give. And so as we meet together in humility and prayer and the purpose to see God's kingdom grow, we are living out the community that God desires for us. So God's original plan, right? And so if we, if we do not want to live in isolation, we know that God's original plan was that people live in community and they need one another. Uh, it was not good for man to be alone. God created human, uh, community, Adam and Eve. And then we all know sin entered in, right? Sin entered into the world and there was community. That's when community began to break down. You can see this just unfold, right? Because people began to, to kill one another. People began to, to cheat uh, to one another. People began to, to lie to one another, hurt one another. Yet God's desire for community never changed. It never stopped. The plan really actually only got better. Because then enter Jesus Christ, right? The one who's able to redeem all the fallen humanity. He's able to set free us all from the chains of sin. The one who makes it possible through his death, burial, and resurrection. And providing the gift of the Holy Spirit for us to see what happens to think in things like Acts 2, right? Where 3,000 people are saved and people begin to live in harmony and community, not because they're perfect, but because they're faithful people who want to see God uh, just glorified all over the nations. And they're willing to sacrifice their own wants and desires for the sake of somebody else. The church is not perfect and it will not be until heaven. But the church is still the plan that God has desired for us. You're a part of his plan. I'm a part of his plan. We're all in this, and we're going to strive towards the same goal, to see God glorified all over the earth. Because the church is, the, is, a, is a picture, imperfect as it may be, a picture to the rest, uh, for the rest of the world, the, the beautiful salvation through Jesus Christ. So are you willing to live out God's desire for community in your own life? Where are you struggling in community? Where are you, where are you finding it difficult? Because guys, I promise you, we as a, as a church, as a student ministry staff, man, we're going to try our, our darndest under the power of God to, to do so. So real quick, I just want to wrap up with a couple of uh, really just promises from us to you about how we too want to make sure that we are living in community with you. Because we're not, this, this is some kind of ideal that we want to impose on you and say, all right, go on children, go, live it out, right? No, like we are a part of this too. This is something that we are about as well. And so some promises from us to you, the community of faith. We're going to rally around you, and we're going to pour deeply into your lives. We're going to love you well, and we're going to teach you who God is and what he has done. That is a promise that, of us to you. We're going to promise that our teaching will go past superficial stories and moralistic uh, lessons, and we will always point you to King Jesus, who is the only hero of the entire 
Bible. It is him of every single story, and we're going to point you to King Jesus. We promise that we're going to challenge you and that we're going to take you seriously. We're going to make sure that we listen to you. We promise that. We promise that our that we're going to be your biggest cheerleaders, but we're also going to hold you accountable, and we're going to call you out on stuff. We're, we're promised that we're going to, to do our best to answer your big questions about culture, about the world, about what's going on in the world. Those things that we see on the news are like, I have a question. We're going to do our best to answer those questions, both from the stage and in just side conversations that we're going to have with you. Right? That's a promise. We're going to promise to pray for you every single day. And we want to promise that we're going to do our best to pray for you and with you. We promise that we're going to do our best to practice what we preach. And we're going to promise to, to, as we talked about last week, we want to, and just as a student ministry, we want to live well, we want to love well, and we want to lead well. As these are promises that, that as, as people walking in the same direction as you, uh, our students in this ministry, so that you can know that there truly is community here. So we're going to do our best. We're going to, we're going to do it perfectly well. But we're going to do our best under the power of the Holy Spirit to, to carry this out so that we can be a community of believers together. We love you guys so much. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to end on one more uh, song of worship. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe in this room, maybe there is just some, some hurt. Uh, maybe somebody, or maybe there's some, some sorrow. Um, Maybe there is some, some jewelry, right? Maybe that too. So I don't know, whatever you feel like you, you think is best, however the Holy Spirit is leading you, I'm really not going to try to con- like convince you to do anything. I want God to speak to you tonight. And I want him to, to work in your life. But I do want you to, to know this. I want prayer and service to be your primary focus right now. And so I don't know what that means for you. Maybe it is going to pray with somebody who you have wronged. Or maybe vice versa, right? Maybe they wronged you and you're just going to go pray with them. Maybe it's someone who you just want to say, man, this really cool thing happened today. And I just want to tell somebody, and uh, come pray with me because I want to give glory to God right now. Maybe you're going through something really tough and you just need to grab a buddy and say, man, I am struggling right now. Just pray for me. Pray for me. I don't know what it is, but we just need to serve one another. We need to pray for one another. We need to lift up God's word high and, and carry this out so that we can live in community with one another. Guys, uh, you are loved, you are cared for, and we just want to see you grow in your walk and your faith in Jesus Christ. And so, as a community, we're going to do that together. You're not alone. This is, we're going to do this. And so if you'll allow us, we would love to do that. So maybe pray for a humble heart tonight as well. Father God, we love you. God, we, we are, are humbled at the fact that you, you use us. There, there is, honestly, God, there is really no reason why you should use me. I am someone who is constantly messing up. But Father, in your grace, you lift me up. God, in your redemption, when I called upon you during salvation and you answered and you 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 made me righteous, not because of my own doing, but because of the righteousness of, of Jesus Christ, just cast down upon me, Lord. On that day, you freed me from the chains of sin. And now, Father, I want to live in submission to you. I want to see others as more important than myself. I want to lift others up so that we can We can ask you, almighty God, to to work in ways that are beyond us, Father, so that we can see your glory revealed. And Lord, tonight, I hope that's the, the, the hope and the prayer for everyone in this room. To know you, Jesus. To serve you, Jesus. To serve the person next to them like Jesus would. As if it is Jesus sitting next to them. To serve them. To pray for them and lift them up so that, God, you can work and you can, and your glory can be revealed. And then, God, oh, God, so that we can see salvation, so that we can see our church filled, God, with new believers, that we can see our school just 
swept over by the mighty rush of the gospel and see people come to know you right in our lunch room, right in our classroom, God. Our families, Father, who don't know you, Lord, that on the sitting home at couch, on the couch and just praying to receive Christ wherever it might be. Lord, we're, we just want to be on that, on that same goal with each other in community. And so we love you, God. Give us the, 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 just the power to live in the community, God. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard, Lord. It's going to be difficult, but God, we want to do it. So give us the wisdom. Give, give us the grace, God, to do so. We love you, King Jesus. You're all in your precious name. Amen. Amen.